What is going on everybody and welcome to the tutorial video where I'm going to be showing you how you can access XML data in Unity. The main idea is that you can store data attributes for things in your game then easily look them up by ID or type to reference all their data attributes. Now I'll be demonstrating a few ways that you can use this in a real game in just a moment. Uh, but before I do that I'd just like to say if you find this video helpful please leave it a like. Also feel free to subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already for much more tutorial videos like this one, as well as lots of other really cool independent video game development related content. If you have any questions or run into any problems with this tutorial video, feel free to drop it down in the comments section below. But without further ado, let's jump right on into the tutorial video. Okay, so before we get into the actual tutorial, I'm gonna give you a quick demonstration of the Unity project that I've created, just so we, you can get a good idea of what we're going for in this tutorial. So let's say that we've created a game where we have an inventory of weapons, armor, potions, stuff like that. And all these different items have different data attributes associated with them, such as a name, a description, an image of them, even different stat points uh, like attack damage or the amount of healing that we'll do. And so we can save all this data in an XML file much like this one. So for this tutorial, we're gonna have a few different attributes that we're gonna be accessing through XML. So for each item, we're gonna have a couple different attributes associated with them. So we're gonna have just an item title, an item description, a color, and an image. Also note that each item has a unique ID and type associated with them. So now back over in Unity, we have a bunch of different buttons configured to search for different items a lot more easily. So for example, we can just show off all the items here by clicking show all items and then it loads all the items that we have in our inventory and displays their title, their image, their description, and then you can see their color associated with them is just this background here. And so the color is just kind of an additional way to group the item. Uh, for example, a gray item might be a weaker item, while a gold item might be a much stronger item. And then when we're done looking at all the items, we can click the back button in the lower right hand corner here. And now we can go into something like show weapons. Now it only shows items that we have with the weapons type. If we go back, we can show armor, and this shows all the armor items that we have. Same thing for show potions. And then at the bottom here, we just have showing individual items. And this is where we can just click on it and it will search the item by their unique ID and just display it to the player on the screen. So now that you have sort of an understanding of what we're going for in this project, I'm just gonna give you a quick overview of my Unity project and then we can actually get into coding this. So in the main scene here, we just have a main camera and directional light by default. For our canvas, we'll have two items under that. We'll have the buttons container, and this is actually what contains just all the different buttons here for like show all, show weapons, and all that. And then on the inventory screen, this is where we have the inventory container as well as this back button here. And this inventory container is where we're actually going to be spawning prefabs so if we click over this prefabs here, we see we have this inventory item UI prefab. So if we just bring that into the inventory container, it'll just drop in here and show the prefab default. And we can drag as many of these as we want in. And uh, you'll see that this inventory container has a grid layout group on it. So all the items will be displayed in a nice grid like this but we can just go ahead and delete all these items for now. And then the only other thing that we really have in our scene is this UI controller, um, which just has a UI controller script attached to it. You can see that there are some public objects. There's a public game object for uh, the UI prefab, which we just dragged from the prefabs folder here, the inventory screen game object, and that's just this right here, the buttons container game object, which is just this buttons container right here, and then a transform for the inventory container, which is just this inventory container right here, and that is the parent object that we're going to be spawning these prefabs under. 
So now that you have a little bit more understanding of what's going on in my Unity scene, I'm just gonna open up this XML file again and show you in a little bit more detail of what's actually going on here. So at the top of the file, we just have this header information here, and that's just pretty standard. And um, if you've ever used HTML, the structure is pretty similar. Basically, anytime that you open an item, you're just gonna wanna close it using the forward slash right before here. So we'll open up inventory items, and then under that, we'll create an inventory item Item. And then here we can use the attributes ID and we'll set this ID to XML TUT underscore small underscore sword and it is of type weapon. Again, just make sure we close it at the bottom here. And then this inventory item has these different nodes under here. Um, so it's got the item title of small sword, item description, this is the first sword you find on your journey, not very powerful but it will always be by your side. And then next we have this color node. Under it we'll have individual nodes for red, green, blue, and alpha channels. And these will just represent the integer numbers between zero and 255 for the red, green, blue, and alpha channels. When we move over into our C-sharp code, we're actually gonna be converting that number to a number between zero and one with just a little bit of math. And then lastly, we have the image component. And now the image component is just going to be the file name of the image we're going to be using without the extension type, because we're gonna be using the resources.load using a specified file path with this file name added to it. And that does not take in a file type for the item that you're trying to load. And then quickly, I'll just kind of scroll through the rest of these. So as you can see, next we have the steel helmet. After that, we have a small potion then a legendary sword, a recurve bow, chain mail, a big potion, and lastly, a wooden shield. And then again, at the very bottom, just make sure we close out that inventory items tag. All right, and so over here in our UI controller C Sharp script, we're just going to include a couple different libraries for us to reference. And so the only two that we need to add are unityengine.ui and then system.xml. So the Unity Engine UI allows us to use the UI buttons and such. And then the system.xml allows us to access XML files and perform XML searching operations and things like that. Now I'm actually gonna skip over most of this code for now because I did want to show you this custom class that I have. And now this custom class is just sitting inside the UI controller.csharp script. And the reason for that is because the UI controller script is the only script that needs to reference this inventory item class. It may be different for your code, but just be aware that that is how I have it set up here. So each inventory item has a total of six public variables, which correspond to the item ID, item type, item title, item description, background color, and item image. You'll see that all these variables, after I've declared them, I put this get semicolon private set semicolon. And what that does is it allows us to access these public variables from outside. However, we're not allowed to set these items from outside. And this is just kind of a little bit of a security thing. Um, it's basically just like Think of a, a file being set to read only access mode. You can only read the file, you can't edit it. So similarly, we can read these variables from outside, but we can't set them. So here's the constructor for an, the inventory item class, and you'll see that we made it public, and it takes in an XML node variable called cur item node. So to set the string variables, it's pretty straightforward. So for example, for item ID, we'll just set that equal to cur item node dot attributes and then we'll pass in the string variable of the attribute, and then dot value. So back to the XML file, the attributes are basically the ones that are in line with the node, as opposed to being kind of child nodes under that, if that makes sense. So this type one, because it is also an attribute, we're gonna say item type equals cur item node dot attributes, pass in the string value of type, and then dot value. So to set the item title and item description, we're gonna say cur item node, and then we're gonna pass in the node that we want. So for this one, we're gonna do the string value of item title, and then we'll say dot inner text. So that's essentially the text value within these XML tags for the title. And then same thing for the description, we'll just set that equal to cur item node, pass in the string value item desc dot inner text. 
Now for the color, here's where things get a little bit more complicated. We're gonna need to create just a temporary XML node variable called color node, and we'll set that equal to the cur item node dot select single node, and we wanna select the color node. So if we look back in our XML file, it's basically just selecting this whole node here for each inventory item. Now once we have that selected, we can set the float BGR for basically background red equal to float.parse, and we'll do that because we need to parse it from a text type to a floating point number type, and we'll pass in the value of color node, passing in string r dot inner text. So that's gonna set these float values of BGR, BGG, BGB, and BGA to the values that we have set here in our XML file. Now I'd mentioned earlier that we're gonna have to do a little bit of math on them, so I've just created this normalized color value, and then all that does is it says value equals value divided by 255 return value. So this just converts it from a number between zero and 255 to a number between zero and one. So for each of these float variables, we'll just say BGR equals normalized color value, passing in BGR. Same thing for BGG, BGB, and BGA. And then the last step we have to do is just set the BG color to equal a new color, passing in BGR, BGG, BGB, and BGA. And that will create the background color component. And then the last thing that we have to do is set the item image. So first we're going to create a string variable for our path to image, and we'll set that equal to inventory icons slash the image file name. And again, we get that image file name by saying cur item node passing in string image and then dot inner text. And I should point out that over in Unity, under the resources folder, I have this inventory icons folder, and this is where I keep all the icons for the images that we'll be loading into the game. So once we have that path to the image, we'll just set the item image equal to resources.load using type texture 2D, and we just pass in the path to the image. And then lastly, for the inventory item, I just have this update inventory UI function, and it takes in a game object inventory inventory UI. And I'm not going to go through this line by line, but essentially what it does, it just sets all the different values of that game object prefab to match um, that of each item. So it just sets the background color, the texture, the text, the title text, and the description text components. All right, so now we're going to go over the actual code for the UI controller class. So again, we just have these public variables. There's the game object for the item UI prefab, the game object for the inventory screen game object, game object for the buttons container game object and lastly the transform for the inventory container and we just have one local variable for XML document and it's going to be called item data XML and that's basically just the XML file that we'll be referencing to get all the item information from. So we're gonna start in the awake function here, and the first thing that we wanna do is set that item data XML variable. So we'll just create a text asset variable called XML text asset, and we'll set that equal to resources.load, passing in type text asset, and we're gonna be finding that in the XML folder, and again, it's just this inventory item data XML file. So over in Unity, under the resources folder, we have this XML folder, which contains the inventory item Item data XML file. So once we have that text asset, we'll take the item data XML, we'll set that equal to a new XML document, and then we'll do item data dot XML dot load XML passing in the XML text asset dot text. And then that essentially just changed this raw text into an XML document, which we can further process in C sharp. And then lastly, we'll just turn off the inventory screens game object because we don't need that at the beginning. Now the rest of this code is just essentially functions that are going to be mapped to the different buttons in our game, which will trigger different behaviors. So for example, starting at the top, if we want to find all items, we'll create a public void function called find all items. And in it, we're going to generate an XML node list called items, and we'll set that equal to item data dot XML, which is our XML document dot select nodes. And we'll just pass in the nodes that we want to select. So because we're selecting everything, we want to select everything with the inventory item tag in inventory items. So it's as easy as just doing slash inventory items slash inventory item. And so again, this is going to return 
all inventory items. And then we just loop through this for each function. So for each of the items, we're going to essentially spawn the item. And I just have this function called spawn inventory item. And I can show you that real quick. All it does is it takes in an XML node called item. It creates a new game object called a new item UI. And that's going to instantiate the item UI prefab, setting the parent to the inventory container. We'll also create an inventory item. Remember that's that custom class that we created just called new inventory item. And we'll set that into a new inventory item, passing in the XML node of item. And lastly, on the new inventory item, we'll just call update inventory UI, passing in that prefab that we just instantiated. And again, that's just that function down at the bottom of the inventory item here that just sets all the text and image and color variables. So that's essentially it for find all items. Now if we wanna find items of a certain type, so for example, if we wanna find just all the weapons, we're gonna be calling a public void function called find items of type, passing in a string variable for the item type, and we do something very similar. We'll create an XML node list called items. We'll set that equal to itemdata.xml.selectNodes. And this time we're going to do slash inventory items slash inventory item. And then we kind of do this uh, interesting thing here. So we do an open square bracket at type equals single quotation mark. And then we're going to do a double quotation mark to close out this string. We'll insert our item type here. And then we're going to do another double quotation mark a single quotation mark to uh, end the item type here, and then a close square bracket, and then another double quotation marks. So hopefully that's not too confusing, but if you just wanted to find just the weapons, for example, you can just do weapons like this. We're basically just trying to get the item type inside single quotes here, but we wanna be dynamic, so we'll leave it this item type for now. And then again, for each of the XML nodes in items, we'll just spawn inventory items. And lastly, we just call this show inventory items. All that does is turns off the buttons and then turns on the inventory screen. And then the last thing that I wanted to show off in the code here is the public void for find items with ID. And we'll pass in a string for item ID. And this is if we want to find a specific item using its specific ID. And so this time, instead of doing an XML node list, List, we'll just do a single XML node called cur node. We'll set that equal to item data XML dot select single node. And then we'll do slash inventory items slash inventory item. And this time we'll do the open square bracket at ID, single quotation mark, item ID, single quotation mark, close square bracket. Then we'll just check to make sure the current node is not null. And if there is a current node, then we'll just spawn inventory item passing in the current node. Again, show the inventory items. So hopefully that all makes sense. The last thing that we just need to do in Unity is just go through each of our buttons and uh, configure the on click function. So for example, for the show all buttons, we're going to be calling the find all items. For the show weapons button, we're going to be doing the UI controller dot find items of type, passing in the string of weapon. For armor, we'll do the same thing, passing in armor. For potions, we'll pass in the type of consumable. And then for the individual item buttons, we're going to be calling UI controller dot find items with ID, and we're just going to be passing in the string variable for the corresponding item ID. And so that's just going to wrap up this tutorial video on accessing XML data in your Unity game. I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial and found it helpful. If you did, make sure you leave this video a like. Also, feel free to subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already for much more tutorial videos like this one, as well as lots of other really cool independent video game development related content. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, or otherwise, feel free to drop them down in the comments section below. Anyways, I hope you all have a fantastic rest of your day and I'll see you in the next one.